Right, high level languages, they fall into two categories. First one is traditional. Now what I mean by traditional language, I'm talking about a non-object language. And the second is the newer, so I'm going to call them modern languages, yeah? So the modern languages, I'm talking about object-oriented programming, uh, which, so the concept of objects um, is supported in these modern languages, and that's the languages that have taken over um, from the traditional languages. Having said that, there is still a high demand in the industry for traditional programming. However, they always ask you to have uh, knowledge of traditional programming as well as uh, knowledge of an object-oriented programming language as well, because they both have their um, applications in the real world, and sometimes they combine the two together. Now. The modern languages, those object-oriented programming languages, can also be divided into two further categories. So, object-oriented programming languages could be divided into uh, one interpreter, and secondly, you have a compiler. Now, what's the difference between an interpreter and a compiler? An interpreter, what it does, it takes instructions, so for example, print to screen, ask user for information, um, print info to screen, load file, close file. So whatever instructions we give are executed one by one. So it would basically follow the same first instruction and then it will go to the second one and then go to the third instruction. And once that's executed successfully, go to the fourth, fifth and so on. So it will interpret every line line by line basically yeah a compiler on the other hand what it will do it will take the whole program and if there's no errors in the program it will compile and convert it into a, a binary equivalent an executable file and then that executable file becomes portable you can take it anywhere interpreter however um, if you make a mistake in one line that won't stop it uh, it would basically run the first Let's say, for example, you've got a, uh, you know, you you've written a hundred lines, and on line 99, you've you've put an error or something. You didn't write the correct syntax. It would go all the way to line 99, and then it would stop at the line 99. But it would have executed the previous 98 statements. Uh, with the compiler, it won't allow that. What it will do, it will stop. It will. It won't even allow you to run the program from the start anyway. So you have to correct the whole code. The whole code has to be all correct, and then it would run. And then you would deal with um, the runtime errors if there was something wrong. So for example, let's say you uh, part of an equation, you're adding uh, two numbers together, and by mistake you put the subtraction. Um, then you you subtracted the numbers and then it, it gave you the wrong um result so then you would correct that these are called runtime errors more on that in uh, examples so once we hit a runtime error we're going to talk about it but for now what i want you to know is the two different types of object oriented programming uh languages so what is software programming all about any ideas of a definition instructions coded in a programming language to carry out a task by a computer for example so that's my definition of what software programming is all about and uh, that's basically it now in order to build a program we must use uh, building blocks how do we build a program all right let's assume that we're building a, uh, a house let's build a house what do we need we need bricks maybe windows door etc so you get the idea we need a lot of different building blocks so that will be a building blocks so what are the building blocks in the program Building blocks in programming are called constructs. Okay, so that's the basically the the language we'll be using from from now on. So every time I'm talking about a building block, I'm going to be saying constructs. So what are the type of constructs that we have available in programming? 
So like I said, constructs are the building blocks. The first is we're going to talk about is the if statement. So what is an if statement? You can probably guess, can't you? Um, if something is true, then it's a condition, isn't it? So if a statement is a condition, if something is true, do such and such, basically, yeah? Right, so we're going to give you an idea of the syntax of the if statement. Now, the syntax is very, very similar. In fact, if not identical in all programming languages. So, you know, by looking at this syntax, you'll probably be able to apply it straight away in your C program, C++, C Sharp, Java, PHP, you name it, you can probably apply this syntax to it. So it's very universal here. So we start off with the word if and then we open a bracket and let's say for example we have x and then we say equals equals 5 and then we close the bracket. Okay. Now by doing that what we're saying if x is identical when we put two minuses to, to, together sorry two equal uh, signs together this basically means identical to 5 so when x is identical to 5 then do whatever comes after this and, or execute this block that we're going to open now to write the word uh, a block or to to give that so if that's true we open a block with the squiggly brackets and then we also and then we write our instructions what we want it to do and then once we finished we close the block off with that so that would be isolated from the program that block here won't run if x is not equal to 5 it's not identical to to 5 so if x is not identical to 5 that block here would be completely ignored and with the if uh, statement there's also else what if it's not true this statement up there the x equals 5 is not true we have the word else do this block of code now ignore the dots that I'm putting here I'm saying the dots are basically going to be some sort of instructions like for example print to screen okay or something but obviously we're going to write it as like that so what we're going to delete we're going to delete those dots here I just wanted to illustrate and then whatever do something here do something or do do something else right so you get the idea we are only just talking about the basics here just giving you the the concept behind the if statement